will they adapt in the land of dawn? It's your casters here on the desk. Butters, get in, as well as Leo. Mm -hmm. All right, it's time to get the show on the road. And now, let's look at the lane assignments here because it's very important that they get the counter matchups on either side. And it looks like the Boxia is going to be meeting up his boy, the Yu Zong, down in the EXP lane, while in the goal lane it's going to be Alice and the Harith. Brenton going to be starting off on their purple buff while maybe looking for the distraction. Ooh, this is maybe just looking for that ejector Reset. on the purple. He did take smart missiles, though. Oh, all right, so he's just going to try to steal, clear wave, bother them, maybe. Going to be using the Cyclone Eye right on through. Flap Easy has lethal intentions, goes for the stun, misses. There's no damage here, but low, puts maybe at pretty low health. So, yeah, that's the tank of Burmese Ghost out of commission for now. I like the reaction uh, of Flap just going in for that first kill, running over maybe. He forced maybe to use the flicker. There might be a pull yourself together on his side, but at least it goes down for a couple of minutes. I mean, interestingly enough, I'm looking at Flap Dizzy and I was thinking, maybe he's going so hard because he has the execute. I double check it. Boom, he's got the rejuvenate. So again, Bren is showing a lot of respect to the Burmese Ghouls, knowing that this is going to be all about that team fight. Yeah, Revitalize is super important in this matchup. Like, you want to outlast the Yu Zhong, and you want to make sure you're putting as many marks and making it as hard as possible to sustain a team fight. Now, Carl Tizi here has both of his buffs, so the initial thought of invading and making Kaltizi's life hard before the sec the first turtle, the second minute of the game, is out the window for Burmese Ghouls. They have to find another way of attack. Mm -hmm. Now, we can see up uh, on top, Rebo here getting harassed a bit by Harith, and that is one of the things that the Harith can do. The flowing blood can easy can be easily dodged by the Chrono Dash, so it's not going to be a problem for him. Now, Carl pulling that trigger on that Blazing Duet to clear the wave. Yep, he wants to try his best here to kind of just control the wave so that they have first priority on this turtle. You can see the rotation. Even Harith is, uh, is heading, uh, is making his way down towards that turtle fight. And this is going to be really big here because Burmese Ghouls, they've won so many of these just off of one turtle. Mm -hmm. This is Carl Easy going for the purple. And I do believe after oh. Flappy Easy pushes them off, they're going to go for this turtle. Now that's few going to be pushed in by Ruby DD. Oh, Carl Easy gets. Invaded in by Ruby DD, and that's gonna be the turtle taken here by Ace. And there's not much Brandy Sports can do. Flap DZ sure pops the Poisson, but for so long, how can you survive this? Oh, he's still in it. That's a nice dash. He saves himself, and that's going to be just the first blood and the turtle. Oh, wait, Burmese Ghouls. They're not going to force it. Instead, just going to go for a few hits on the first turret. Great save coming from View there. If he wasn't there, at least they, he uh, then he would be going down and giving another kill over to the Burmese Ghouls. But this is what BG kind of played for. First turret, get that extra gold, make things work. Oh, here we go. Butter, check it out. And look at this. The unstoppable force will be forced, but still maybe won't go for the engage. They don't have their ultimates. They don't have their spells. And they are just forced to back. Out. It was a bit of a, let's say, uh, they're trying to just scare out Lusty to not follow them. Well, what's happening here up on the top side? Looks like, I mean, both sides are kind of just eyeing for information, and especially Kid. There could have been an engagement there, but counting the numbers, three versus two, not the best, so they have to pull back. They get some good damage onto few for now, but how long can this last? Calamity Reaper being purchased by Ruby DD. Ooh, Mountain Shocker scouting out where the rest of Brenny Sports are, and that's gonna be Rebo just hit by three. Smooth operator Ruby DD is so far responsible for the two kills currently present for Burmese Ghouls. Ah. Oh. And Ace even stole the crab coin that Carl Feezy was go was uh, taking on that top lane with the Mountain Shocker. So things are going great for the side of Burmese Ghouls. Maybe. Yep. Maybe looking low. Oh, that's the first pick off. You gets it. And this is some redemption for Brenny Sport. Like they can at least take the purple. And yeah, we are about five minutes in for 30. A thousand gold ahead. I mean, is it some? Because again, they're losing pressure across the map, and now Burmese ghouls are looking to continuously Turtle, attack, 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 soon. and they are destroying the shields. They've already completely cleared off the uh, the, uh, the uh, barriers coming in from that top side turret. Few he gets on out of there. He doesn't want to, you know, put himself in any more danger than he already is. The Burmese ghouls only up by seven hundred gold, but they could double this off of a single kill. 
Grand Esports, they should look out for the pickoffs that Burmese Ghouls are going for. Yep, on angles, the Burmese Ghouls want to go, and that's Few getting blasted out, but Ace from the back lines getting caught first. That's a trade currently. The oh. mid support oh. for the core and the tank, and now Flapteezy still has the Poisson, gets caught in there by the Dragon Tail, knocks him out, and the fight stays here near the Turtle Pit. Now Lusty trying to make sure that they all stay put, and Kazuki trying to take this, and he does it one for one now. An ejector onto one Rebo going into the back lines. He is going to retreat. Ruby DD wants more. That's the disengage. Oh, Ruby DD. He needed to target a single person. He drops on the Xamarin Force and he got splits in two. He wants to go for D, but then Kaltizi's in the back. Which does he go for? Grand Esports know that Burmese Ghouls have the team fight on lock right now for the early game. What they are doing right now is this they're trying to get the small victories. Get the turtle. Don't overextend. Do not engage them as much as possible. It's their time now. Just scale for a bit. Wait for the proper timing to fight. And Bren Esports are doing it well. Mm, can I get more though? Can they push this advantage that they have here? D needs to get oh. out of there. Oh no, Rebo. He gets caught by the Imperial Justice. Great play coming in for the Burmese Ghouls. And a huge counter item here. Necklace of Durant just to stop the healing coming in uh, from everybody on the side of Bren. And they want to go for another pick on to Lusty. Wrong place, wrong time. On the bottom lane, there what? is another kill on Flap Easy, and bodies are going down on the floor just because Burmese Ghouls, they really like these pickoffs. Three fronts and three losses here for Brandy Sports so far. Kraut Easy looking for revenge. The bloodthirsty prodigy here gets one at least. Shutting down Ruby DD. Now the fight oh. continues after taking this turret. That's D knocking him up. Gonna go for the black dragon form. This is a full bar of Sha energy. And now Kraut Easy dueling with Ace. And there you go. The unstoppable force takes down the core. That's Claude destroyed here, kid. Flickering out. And that's D finally shut down by Lusty. Currently two for one. Brenny Sports. They seem to be getting trumped by Burmese goals at every turnstile. I think, it, uh, so far, I think it's just two mistakes, and that's why the Burmese goals are only slightly ahead here. Mm. Burmese ghouls, they've been getting a lot of these kills, but for the side of Bren Esports, they're getting the trades, because the last time they met, Every fight that Burmese Ghouls wins, it's go it, it actually has an objective that, that comes with it. But for this certain game, there is always a trade in terms of 2-4-2, 2-4-1, and Burmese Ghouls, they're not getting the turrets early. Yep, all unstoppable force here, plus the ejector into the back line. Poisson's not going to save you, Ruby DD, an assassin of a Harith, takes down Flap. And now, hold up, Carl DZ looking for some revenge. Kid uses the Imperial Justice to retreat. That's gonna be D going in. Where's the backup? They're looking for it. Kaltizi getting blasted. Oh, that's the Fatal Links onto one. D is still alive. A bar full of Sha. And that's Few destroyed by D. And they get away with it. Ruby DD is just having a ball. Oh my goodness. How did D survive that? My goodness, he really took a, quite a beating off of it. And Burmese Ghouls, they're getting the fights, but they're placing, timing it well. When do they take a fight? They take a fight when they take down Flap. Flap is responding. He cannot respond to that gank. And that means D, we are, as of now, will be unkillable. I think it was looking good initially because Few, he was looking for that pickoff. He was trying to say, hey, I could get this big stun onto D and maybe we can play off of this. Burmese Ghouls see the opportunity to say, hey, he has no options to get out now. We can look for the punish. Mm, that is true. As And as you can see right now, Burmese Ghouls, they really like to go for these kinds of plays. Just stay in the brush, try to get the ejector close to Kid. Kid sets up the Imperial Justice and that is a one for one. And that's what happened right the here. Same old story. The same old story. Lusty walks into a death bush. And now Flap Easy trying to save the day. Son, it's too late. Mm, the classic. The classic. Happens more times to pros than you would like to admit. But D is going to keep on smacking up that tier 2. And this is what Burmese Ghouls have been doing ever since the group stage. Just, just making sure they take fights and they start getting that return of investment somewhere across the map. Todak did a pretty good job. But, you know, Burmese Ghouls making it look really, really natural. Brenny Sports, they should be looking at that Lord, maybe not give it to Burmese Ghouls as of the moment, because when they do, that is going to be all of the outer turrets down, 
and probably one inhibitor turret on their side is going down as well. Laptizi hit there with the ejector, but it's gonna be a non-starter. Real quick, item check. Kid just bought a glowing one. That should lead to more kills, but right now, that's the Mountain Shock are starting it off. As we just said, few gets taken down. Ruby DD though, two for one. The current trade here, the numbers are going well for Bren Esports. Kid and Ruby DD for few. That was a great fight for Bren Esports. Burmese Ghouls, they thought that he, they caught Bren off guard, but they were ready. They knew that there was a possibility, a small possibility, that someone or two people are there in that brush and it paid off for them. Yeah, and I mean, even Ruby DD, he dropped down the Salmon Force to make something happen, but now the Burmese Ghouls looking to turn this fight on top of them to make sure they don't get the Lord, maybe in the back line, but he goes down almost straight away. Baptiste is making sure he's zoning out Ace. They have oh! a double kill coming in for Carl TZ. Making it look real nice and smooth as the comeback mechanic is here. Down 4k, now evening up the score to at least 1k differential and taking the lead. Oh no, the fight continues, kid. Forced to retreat, Zaman Force set in by Ruby DD, but the damage has been done. Words have been said, feelings have been hurt, and Lord is marching down mid. Nice engage there for the side of Kid. He might have bitten up more than he can chew, but Ruby DD saves the day. They cut their losses to a minimum. Check this gold graph out. At least we get a better idea because, again, when we were looking at the Burmese ghouls, they were almost reaching that 5K mark, and that would have been a really difficult position to get, especially when it was about seven to six minutes of the game. Now, things have changed, and they're looking to force it harder. Yep, they're pushing this mid lane turret. Mission accomplished for Bren Esports. Ruby DD takes a few hits from Lord. The swing of the axe chunking him off to about half health and there's another push up top wow how the tables have turned burmese ghouls now feel the pressure from brainy sports and look at this all turrets all outer turrets for the side of burmese ghouls are going down and for the first time in forever I'm seeing Burmese ghouls defend their own turrets. I mean, don't hold your breath for too long here. This is going to be the Lord power play. Red going to force the situation here. D trying to disengage the entire team to allow time and buy space for Ruby DD to drop the salmon force. And Bren Esports, they call it. They see what's going on. No, I will not let you choose this fight. And maybe he's not done with it yet. The unstoppable force is going to get punished with the Circle Eagle as the rest of Bren Esports push him back at the Toys Poissons as a recommendation to stay away from our jungle that was a good move for the side of burmese schools that they just wanted to catch one person for the side of brent esports and toss him back maybe just stall brent esports from pushing but burmese schools the execution right there didn't really work out for their side just because brent esports they were ready and they know that that, that will happen oh flap easy here picked off by ruby dd they get their come up ins and it's not for free butters Divine Crystal and who uh, Divine Glaive and Holy Crystal, not the Di Divine Crystal, goes up for the mages here on the side of Red Esports. Oh, D with that black dragon form, and we're looking for a big engage here. That's going to be the oh oh the blazing duet takes down the kid with few putting in the last touch. Now D here caught in no man's land. You are the odd one out. Two for none here so far. Brenny Sports turning the river into a wasteland. Right now, I have to give it to Bren. Their re-engagements into these fights, especially when Burmese have the advantage, is pretty significant. Let's check out the items here. Butters, what are your thoughts? Okay, Athena shield for the side of Lusty. That will help him survive Kid Silvana. Rebo is on a roll right now. He has all of his items up. Winter Truncheon oh. is there. Flapteezy is kind of having a hard time just getting his items. He has a Molten Core there just to clear the waves. For the side here of D, he doesn't have, uh, let's say, a Blade of Despair just to add extra damage. Ace here still has four items only on his belt. I mean, with the items in the position that they are in, are in right now, Burmese Ghouls, 39k to Bren's 43. Bren just hit their power spike. All Burmese and Ghouls have to do, play this slow, clear that waves, wait until that Lord is up, and then play this stalemate where you're putting enough pressure to say, hey, I could look to contest you on Lord, and I might contest you on Lord, but as long as you are not finishing the Lord, we have enough time to hit our 42k power spike, and then that's where they're gonna call it. Queen swings on Carl TZ. He might just stack some of the damage. Oh, here. the Let's fight has already started from the back line. Ejector on the Blap Easy. He pops the 
Poissons, and that's D taking quite a few hits from that. Mountain Shocker gonna be an incentive for Brady Sports to back out. That's gonna be from the back lines, maybe getting chunked. Oh, this is going to be the pit helping Brady Sports out. That's a double for Bren. Make it a triple. It's one for each of the TZs. And right now, they are primed for the second Lord Take. Mind you, this is luminous. Oh no, this was a very poor choice for the Bull Burmese Ghouls to actually initiate on that fight. They they said, hey, maybe we can go back in. The Toys Poissons has been wasted. And D, he's got a little bit of health. He has Max on his passive, so he could heal back up. Unfortunately, Ruby DD can't get into the fight. You want to fight on these neutral objectives, a place where you have a lot of places to abuse your Chrono Dash and kind of outmaneuver your opponents. Molten Core became the cursed helmet here for Flap TZ. Coral TZ having a good time just roaming around the map, getting those stacks and dominance eyes, wind swings, cursed helmet. That is enough dam uh, defense items to tank the damage that will come out from Burmese ghouls. So that means as long as Flap TZ is getting item progression, there is going to be a lot more resources that will be put to him to take him down. I would totally agree here. And uh, again, Burmese Ghouls have to choose the places that they fight in. They cannot go into these narrow corridors. They cannot afford to get hit by these big ticket ultimates from Lusty. And if Rebo gets into that back line, sure, you have escape mechanics, but Kid needs to be the one to dictate where the place and time the fight is going to occur. And those are all tall orders because Brenny Sports has the superior combat mobility. Mm -hmm. They can just say where the fight happens and they can force him. And right now, that's what's happening here. Mountain Shocker to try and clear the waves, but it's too little too late. Lord already whacks away at that inhibitor turret ace at less than half health that's going to be the push on bottom lane as well now only mid stands let's see how burmese ghouls will deal with the second lord of the game there's a fight on all fronts here and i'm waiting to see who's gonna make the first move oh thankfully they were able to kill the lord before it, it actually charged in towards uh that inhibitor down on mid side that would have been a huge blow the Rebo is just turning on that Blood Ode. He's, he's, never, not, never, he's off. never turning it off. He has the purple buff on under his belt. Now, Coral TZ, they have all the time in the world to just end this just because Burmese Ghosts, they're not getting their buffs anymore. Yeah, this is the choke right here. I mean, yes, you're, you're saying it's a choke, but it's only 8k. They're only 8k behind. Burmese Ghouls, if they win one fight, they're even. And if they win that fight, the gold lead isn't going to matter at all once it hits that 53k mark. But then again, Gijun, if you are defending this hard, you take every advantage that you can. True, but that also means you have a safe way to farm. It goes both ways here. Bren need to find a way to catch the Burmese Ghouls off guard. And the Burmese Ghouls, if they get a little too antsy and they don't play disciplined and walk out and get punished for that mistake, Bren will end this game. There's going to be 92 more seconds and Burmese Ghouls don't necessarily have to force anything. So far, these two teams have been acting like well-informed businessmen. They know the economy of their skills. They oh, yeah. know what the timings are like. They know which heroes should be the priority. And right now, they know how much each buff costs. And that's what I'm trying to get at. The last time we checked, as you said, it was what? Like a 7k, 8k gold lead? Mm -hmm. Just. Just. But that's because Brady Sports has been on the choke only about a rotation of buffs in. But now, that's the second or third. And Burmese Ghouls, you see it. You feel that Ruby DD, you feel that Ace, they're just not dealing as much damage. Mm -hmm. For now, but let's have a look. I mean, they've, they've got the purple buff, which is really important, especially for Rebo here. And now, keep your, your eyes on Carl TZ. When he has that orange buff, Burmese Ghouls might have to reconsider whether or not, uh, whether uh, who the hero priority is going to be here. And this orange buff, it's way too important. Oh! oh! Pulls in two from the Burmese Ghouls and the Mouth of does come out, but maybe he's trying to zone out the rest. And Flapti he doesn't mind taking that damage as he goes on forward, but Rubini D is going to be the next on the chopping block. He tries to dodge it around with his Ivan Force, but it ain't going to be enough as maybe pulls backwards again. He can't do too much. He turns around with the Imperial Justice. Ace tries to go in and get the killing spree. He's got it down. Now it's a 1v3. He dodges right in between, swooping and sliding, but Rebo finally joins the fight. This is looking pretty bad for the Burmese Ghouls, especially on game one. And Brent, they call it off, take their wins, and now they need to end this right here, right now. And there's going to be few trying to do as much damage as possible. Maybe here gets gone out. Ace gets gone out as well. And look at this. The burst down won't be there. But that is not going to be the main objective as the base of Burmese schools go down.